Thanks for clicking on my video. This is Rocky and this review will be for episode 5 of Arrow. There were quite a few things I liked about this episode and quite a few things I didn't like about the episode. Um, I definitely enjoyed the beginning training montage sequence that we had showing, you know, Oliver with Roy, Laurel training with Ted Grant, and Thea with Malcolm. Um, we get, you know, some scenes back and forth between all those characters. And then we get Thea's little offhand remark about wondering what normal people do in the morning. And that tra transitions right to Felicity doing her morning workout. Um, so just, you know, nice uh, cinematic sequence of the training and the fighting and then a comedic element thrown in. So, I, you know, it was a good way to start the episode, I thought. And we get, you know, Ray Palmer, you know, dropping in unannounced at uh, Felicity's apartment. We kind of see a little bit of her apartment, how her, you know, downtime looks like. And we also get the introduction of Felicity's mother, Donna, in the episode. As she also arrives unannounced from a, you know, missed text that was never sent. Um, so throughout the episode, we get that uh, constantly where Ray Palmer is dropping in on uh, Felicity and her mother's there. So it's, you know, kind of a repeating thing that goes on throughout the episode. Uh, we do see that um, uh, Felicity and her mother's relationship is, you know, pretty broken. Um, you know, Felicity has quite a few breakdowns in this episode. Uh, and we also see uh, Oliver with Thea and you know, Thea finally admits that, you know, she's using Malcolm's money to basically buy a place to live as well as to uh, fund the, uh, you know, restart of her club and everything. So we get, you know, some moments there, some relationship moments between those characters um, throughout the episode as well. Um, we also get, you know, the big villain basically of the episode, which is this hacktivist group, Brother I, who attacks the... Uh, power power grid basically of starling city and you know makes threats of you know taking down their banks and things like that and you know this creates a lot of chaos within the city and you know the city is just constantly you know up and down with everything going on i mean we had season one with the earthquake season two with you know uh death strokes attack and you know now this going on i mean starling city is just you know it's amazing it's still in any kind of pieces whatsoever um, during this time, Laurel is actually the uh, acting district attorney, and she is still so pent up with rage that she actually, you know, makes the situation worse and sends basically, you know, equivalent of a SWAT team at, you know, this bank where people are gathering because they're concerned about, you know, the banks have their money. It's all digital. It's all electronic. Um, so, you know, they're just concerned about that, but she makes it worse by having this, you know, emergency response unit basically show up and, she gets scolded by her father, and, you know, at this point, she still hasn't told him, you know, that Sarah's dead, and, you know, she's gonna have to tell him, or I believe Oliver probably will at some point as the arrow, because I mean, it's just, the longer she waits, the worse it's gonna be when he actually finds out. Um, we, as this is basically the Felicity episode, we do get a lot of flashbacks from her um, back in college, where, you know, she had this kind of faux goth look with what we find out is her natural, you know, dark colored hair, um, whether she dyed it black as well, or if it's just dark brown, I don't know, but she definitely is naturally dark colored hair. And she, you know, actually created this virus that the brother eye group is using. So, I mean, that just adds to this emotional, sh emotional stress she's going on with her mother and this, and like I said, pretty, she, she basically has constant breakdowns throughout this episode. Um, so, you know, those were pretty good moments, some good advancement in her character. We still don't get any information on her father other than some vague reference of, you know, he left and things like that. And there's just this kind of dark cloud around her throughout this, you know, series as everyone's trying to figure out who, who her father is. There's all these ideas that, you know, it's some major villain or something like that. But, you know, we don't get any clues to that in this episode. There were quite a few things that were, you know, pretty entertaining in this episode as well. Um, like I said, with the Ray Palmer constantly dropping on Felicity. I mean, he has to be about the greatest boss ever. Is, you know, Felicity can basically take off time whenever she wants. I mean, she just got back from, you know, visiting Barry and then everything going through with her mom. And, you know, she's aware again, you know, 
basically says she's sick, you know, and, you know, it's a comical moment between them, but, you know, it's just the fact that she's basically hopping up and leaving anytime she wants. Um, something else that was kind of entertaining is, uh, we do get, uh, basically, uh, Diggle gets some sort of a mask. Um, so he, uh, helps Roy out with the, uh, uh, men towards the end of the episode attacking the, the bank trucks. And, you know, he has basically a ski mask on. Um, so I thought that was pretty entertaining as well. Um, towards the end, we get, uh, basically Oliver and Thea kind of solidifying their relationship as, you know, she asks him to, you know, why don't you just come live with me so we can be together and be a family. And, you know, he, it seems like he's probably going to do that as, you know, he makes a comment about, you know, do you have a TV? Because he came over with popcorn, basically. And, you know, essentially she has a TV on, you know, that takes up an entire wall. And then in the background we have, you know, Malcolm watching from another building and scowling. So, you know, he, he doesn't want Oliver and Thea to, you know, maintain their strong relationship as he wants Thea to be his. So he's very, you know, controlling in that regard. So, you know, we'll see a lot of, I think, tension between Oliver and him continuing on um, in regards to uh, Thea. Uh, we also get um, towards the end where Laurel actually tells Ted Grant about her sister that she's dead and, you know, that's why she's so angry and you know, he makes a comment that, you know, with that information, now I know how to train you. This goes back to the fact that, you know, Ted Grant is such a great uh, fight trainer in the comics. So it's a play off that. And, you know, he, it looks like he offers her basically a red or black gi. And naturally, she chooses a black, you know, continuing references and uh, nods to her being the black canary. Um, so those are the moments that, you know, I kind of really liked about the episode. Now on to the things that, you know, I didn't like as much. The uh, villain of the episode, Cooper, who was Felicity's ex-boyfriend from college, who supposedly killed himself in prison, but didn't and was, you know, taken over by the NSA and everything. He just came across as a very weak villain. I mean, he had his gun, he had his people, he had his automated guns and everything, but at no point did I feel like he was really a threat. Um, but it did allow Felicity to have, you know, some of her strong moments by, you know, taking him out on her own and things like that. But again, you know, not a very strong villain. Used to very strong villains in this series. And, you know, that kind of disappointed me a bit. Um, another thing I didn't really like is uh, I consider, you know, the way they use the brother eyes kind of, you know, a misuse. And, you know, I was hoping they would do more with it as in the comics, brother eyes, a reference to a, uh, uh, satellite and uh, basically a program that was created initially by uh, Batman around the time of the Infinite Crisis story um, is originally referred to as Brother Mark One or Brother MK One, and Batman basically created it to monitor and assess metahuman threats, as he you know Batman is paranoid by nature, right? So he created this thing to gauge everything going on to. You know, so that way he had a plan in case some of these metahumans, uh, be it the good guys or the bad guys, you know, made some strong plays, he'd be able to uh, find ways to basically, you know, subdue them. Uh, this satellite was uh, basically later on in the comics given sentience and then corrupted by some villains in the comics and was actually ended up used to, to command the uh, OMAC cyborgs to basically attack and kill a bunch of metahumans. Um, so that's where that came from in the comics. And I was hoping they would kind of tie in the OMAC reference previously in uh, the previous episodes with the Brother Eye thing to kind of talk about, you know, drones, unmanned uh, weapons, and possibly artificial intelligence, things like that. I was hoping they were going to tie that all in together. But, you know, in this case, they use it as, you know, the name of a hacktivist group. And, you know, I just felt it was very underplayed. Um, you know, maybe they'll try and reuse it later on, but, you know, it just kind of left a bad taste on my mouth. I, you know, it's, it's a very good reference from the comics and they just, you know, kind of dropped the ball in my opinion. Um, now the other thing that kind of sat very wrong with me is, uh, the big reveal at the end, you know, uh, spoiler warnings, if you guys haven't watched it yet, you may want to cut it off right now, but, uh, Roy has his, you know, nightmare about, uh, killing Sarah. Uh, where basically he's on the the uh, rooftop and 
throws the arrows at her, but he's he's in his civilian gear. Whereas, you know, at that point in episode one, he had just wrapped up the situation with the bomb. And, you know, he was still in his full arsenal gear. So, you know, whether he could change that quick and get up there, you know, I don't know. But at this point, Roy doesn't really have any reason to take out Sarah. So what we're looking at is we're probably seeing that he was either, you know, somehow brainwashed into doing this or, you know, hypnotized possibly by the League of Assassins or some other unnamed villain that we haven't seen yet. Um, or, you know, he's just feeling guilt over something else. And this is just, you know, a hallucination that he's experiencing because of that guilt. But, you know, it's it's definitely coming out of nowhere. There's no possible connection that I can see for why he would, he would kill Sarah. And like I said, the other situation of timing with him as well as if you know if he did kill Sarah and used his arrows his arrows are basically modified or created by Oliver so he would have completely recognized the handiwork you know that it was you know something made by him so I, I didn't really like that I'm not sure why they're you know using that right now I'm sure it'll you know they'll fill something in later with it but you know it just really really didn't sit well with me and it makes no sense whatsoever right now so I'm sorry if I'm ranting a lot in this video, but for me, this was definitely a low point of the season. And I was fully expecting this episode to be, you know, one of the high points because Felicity is such a, a great character. She's very brilliant, very smart. You know, I was hoping we'd get some more information on her childhood and being so brilliant. We get some nods to that, but just not as many flashbacks as I thought we would get or as much information. Um, like I said, just the, you know, like I said, with that villain, Cooper just not being a very strong villain. And how they handled the brother I thing, as well as, you know, having Roy dream about killing Sarah. Just those things just didn't really sit right with me. I, you know, at this point, I expect a lot more from the Arrow writers. And, you know, again, this is all just my opinion. You know, everyone's entitled to their own. You guys may be completely different and thought everything was awesome. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. I'll be happy to discuss um, my viewpoints with you guys as well. Um, so let me know in the comments below. What did you guys think about this episode? Did you enjoy getting the information on Felicity or, um, you know, did you feel some things were kind of a let down as well? Um, if you have any questions about any of the characters or any of the things brought up in this episode, like Brother Eye or anything, go and put those in the comments below as well. I'll be happy to go over that information with you. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I'd go ahead and ask you to give me a thumbs up and share the video. And please subscribe to my channel as I will be continuing to do weekly reviews of Arrow as well as the other Marvel and DC television shows going on right now and any that they add in the future. Um, that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye!